Now that we've seen how to build databases and add data to them, well next we need to know how to get data out of the databases. Basically how to ask questions to the database about what's in it. And the tool, the mechanism for doing that is called Structured Query Language. SQL And you'll oftentimes hear that called SQL. So it's a 4GL, a fourth generation language designed specifically for querying databases. It came about with the introduction of DB2 from IBM, which was the indeed the first commercially available relational database in the world. So it's been around since the implementation of uh, relational databases and has been adapted for use in lots of other data tools since. There are SQL, there are SQL variants for older network in hierarchical databases now there are SQL variants that allow you to even tap into Excel spreadsheets, flat files, Word document tables. So SQL has been widely adopted in many many different arenas so it's it's something that just about everybody that extracts data out of computer related systems has some kind of familiarity with. Now it's based on just like the relational database is, it's based on relational algebra. Which itself is based on set theory. So if any of you have taken any advanced math courses, uh, you've done some relational algebra, uh, and it is part of the GMAT now, so you would uh, uh, certainly run across some of that in the GMAT itself. It allows the user to query update the database, and for the purpose of accountants, we will generally just select that is ask. We'll use a select query to basically ask questions of the database. The other queries that allow you to add, manipulate, etc., are generally going to be done by the DBM, uh, the DBA, the database administrator. In SQL, we use the SELECT statement to begin the query. So SELECT begins the query. Within the SELECT statement, we're going to choose the columns. And as we remember, the column in a database table is equivalent, roughly equivalent, to the attributes that we have set up in our class diagram. So we're going to choose which columns to include in the query. Now the key clause underneath the select is the from clause. There are other clauses available with the select and we will take a look at them in just a few minutes but the from clause allows us to specify which tables are the source or sources, I guess we can do that there too, 
which table or tables are the source or sources of the data for the query. All right, so let's say we've got a query or a table of customer information here, the customer table. And if we look at the attributes there, we've got the customer number, the name of the customer, the amount they have outstanding uh, for receivables, and then the salesperson who's associated with that customer. So if we wanted to just find, just bring back the information for the customer, their name, and the salesperson, we could say something like select customer number, name, and salesperson number from customer. And with that, and we typically end a query with a semicolon there. So with that, we have a basic query. And what that's going to bring us back is this result set here that has just the customer number, name, and salesperson number. So you can see out of the four fields, we selected three of them. And then we just got those three back in our result. Some tables are going to be much wider than this particular customer table, so just bringing back the two or three or four pieces of information, the four columns, attributes, fields that we want, can be more useful, but this example shows us a little bit about how that can be done. All right, now we can add a little bit more to SQL and see more about what it can do. So let's do that next. Now. We've got a cash receipt table here. We've got the remittance advice number, what was the amount, which bank account number are we gonna send it to, the date of the transaction, which customer and which cashier dealt with it. So let's say now we just want to pull all the information we have in this table, which just as a reminder, could have thousands of records in it. We just want the information for customer number C2. We'll do select, just like we always do. I guess I'm writing in red this time. We'll do select, and in this case, we'll do select star. All that says is give me all the fields. That keeps me from having to retype each of the field names. And now we'll say from cash receipt and you'll notice since this table name has a space in it, I had to enclose the table in square brackets here. So these are the ones right to the right of your P key on your keyboard. And that just tells Access to treat this as just one table, the cash receipt table, instead of two separate tables, a cash table and a receipt table. Or So from, and then now I'm going to say where, so you'll see I'm introducing a criteria in here where customer number, equals C2. And then I'll end my query and the results that I get are those three remittance advices for customer number C2. So the where introduces filtering criteria for us. Now sometimes we want to blend information together from multiple tables. So let's say in this case, I've got a customer table and a salesperson table. And what I want to do is gather information from both of those and display it. So I want my customer number, I want the customer name. I also want to know how much they owe, what's, their, what's our receivables amount for that customer. And then I want the salesperson number and name so I can go and yell at the salesperson if that customer owes us too much. For this, I will start with my select customer number. Name, salesperson number, and salesperson name. You'll see the underscore there it keeps me from having to put those square brackets around it. From customer, 
and salesperson. And then I can also use the where to help with my link, linking tables together. So where customer dot salesperson number equals salesperson dot sp number. So in this case, the salesperson number field in both tables is named SP pound sign, SP number. When I tell my query that I want them to be equal, I have to tell it which customer or which salesperson number I want to equal which other salesperson number. And I do that by putting the table name in front of it and then a, a dot or a period to distinguish between the table name and the field name. So customer dot SP number equals salesperson dot SP number. So that's this salesperson number equals this salesperson number. And when I do that, I get my returned list. So you'll see there are two cases where I have three cases where I have the same salesperson for a customer number two, three, and five. So when I do that, the results come back and I've got customer number one, Bill, we, who owes $345 to salesperson number 12, who is Patty. And then we've got three for Howard, including Ron, who owes us a lot of money. So we may have to go and yell at Howard a little bit. Next, we can group by to come up with uh, subtotals or totals that we want to look at. So let's say we've got that cash receipt information again. And now we want to know how much each customer owes us in total. And we're going to do that just as we have before by starting with select. And we'll select customer number. And the sum of amount. So you'll probably recognize that as being really similar to how you can sum a row of data or a column of data in Excel. So just like uh, Excel has functions, databases have functions or operators that we can use, sum is one of them. So we're going to sum the amount from cash receipt and we're going to group it. So we're going to get subtotals by customer number. So we're grouping by customer number and what we'll get now are some results by customer number and then the total amount that they owe us. So we're going to see here customer one owes us a lot of money. Now we could have found that out just by looking at the one line item but in some cases a customer like customer two owes us more than you would guess just by looking at one of the individual line items. This is a way where you can get subtotals using the group by and sum function. Finally, we can use another clause called order by to sort things the way we want to see them. So we'll take a look at our cash receipts table once again. And now we want to see these amounts that are owed in descending amount. So we want to take a look at the largest outstanding amounts at the top of our list and work our way down from there. So we'll do select star from cash receipt where customer number equals C2. And we're enclosing that in the uh, single quotes there just so it knows it's a literal string text and not we're trying to operate on you know something C minus 2. And we're looking for just customer C2. So we have three records. We're going to bring back just three records, but we're also going to order them by 
amount. And we'll do these ascending. So we'll actually look at the smallest amount first and work our way up. And if we did that, we will see that we get the amount 1666, 1669, and then 10,000 in that order. As we can see, SQL is pretty powerful and it does take some learning, but it's not that difficult to look at a SQL query and figure out what it's doing. Creating a query requires us to think logically about how the data is structured in our system and it will help us certainly as auditors determine how to investigate the system in a more effective manner. So let's look at some other SQL operators. Well we've got select or insert into allows us to add data into a table. We can also update existing data in a table. We can do delete from. That allows us to delete information from a table and in almost all cases there we would use the where clause, so where some criteria is met. We can select distinct. And what that means is basically it's going to select, if I've got multiple records with the same value, that value would only show up once. And a lot of times you'll do that just to get a list of maybe customer list. So I'll look at my sales orders and just select distinct customers. And that way each customer would just show up once. I'll order it alphabetically and there I've got a nice uh, customer list of sales that I can investigate. I can also do a between. And that's going to be generally part of a where clause where I can say between, say, L and, and Q in my alphabet if I want to do something like that. Or I can do between check numbers 1500 and 2500 or between January 1st and December 31st of a particular year. And then I can also do in which basically uh, tests for membership to see whether you know a data value I'm looking at matches uh, some kind of a target value. And then just like we would have in relational algebra or just plain old algebra, we've got operators, so we've got equals, we've got this, or Which means not equal. We've got less than, we've got greater than, we've got less than or equal, we've got greater than or equal. Same operators you would see in an Excel formula. And then we also have a variety of functions. We saw the sum already. Another one we might use is average is going to give us the mean, the statistical mean of column X, sum of X, basically the you know summation. We can do a max or a min for x, so that will bring us the maximum or the minimum value. We can even do a count, so basically a count of the records. i.e. rows that meet our criteria. Then with that we've got the basics of SQL that will allow you to start developing and working with queries.